In the previous lecture, we solved the sample questions based on group delay and phase delay. Now in this lecture, we will talk about standard differential equation of LTI systems. First, I will give you one example. And after this example, we will find out the general equation. We will take the help of this example and we will find out the general equation. In this example, this black box is representing one LTI system, the input to this LTI system is XT and the output is YT. This LTI system is having one differential equation and the differential equation is having two different parts. The first part is having the output YT and its derivatives and I will write down the first part on the left hand side. The first term is seven times the third derivative of output YT the third derivative of output yt with respect to time t then the second term is four times the second derivative of output yt after this we have one time the first derivative of output yt d yt dt after this we have the output yt itself so we are done with the left hand side of the equation. Now we will move to the right hand side. On the right hand side we have the input xt and its derivatives. So in this equation we have two times the first derivative of input xt plus the input xt itself. So this is the equation for this LTI system. And here you can see we have coefficients this 7, 4, 1 and 1 here, 2 and again 1 here are the coefficients and all the coefficients are constant. So in our general equation, we need to have all the coefficients as constant. This is one important point. So now we will move to the general equation. We will move to the general equation. In this general equation, first we will talk about the coefficients. I will consider small letter a for representing the coefficients on the left hand side. And as we are obtaining the general equation, we need to consider all the possible cases. So we will have the representation like this a sub n to a sub 0. a n is the nth coefficient. For example, in this case, the n is equal to 3. The number of times you are performing the differentiation is equal to the n. So here we are performing the differentiation 3 times. Therefore 7, this 7 here is represented by a sub 3. In the same way, this 4 here is represented by a sub 2 because we are performing the differentiation 2 times. This 1 here is represented by a sub 1. And here we are not performing any differentiation. So this one here is represented by a sub 0. In the same way, we will have the representations for the coefficients on the right hand side. And this time I will choose letter B. So we have Bn to B0. And if you see the example, this 2 here is represented by B sub 1 because we are performing the differentiation of input one time and this one here is represented by b sub 0 because we are not performing any differentiation here it is simply the input xt you can see one thing here n is equal to 3 on the left hand side and here n is equal to 1 so it is not important to have the same type of pattern on the left hand side and also on the right hand side so instead of n, we will write m. Instead of n, we will write m. So we have bm to b0 and here m is equal to 1. m is equal to 1. So we now understand what are coefficients and how to represent them in general equation. And all the coefficients, all the coefficients an to a0 and bm to b0 should be constant. If they are not constant, then the equation will belong to time variant system. 
Now we will focus on derivatives. On the left hand side we have the derivatives of output y t and on the right hand side we have the derivatives of input x t. Along with the derivatives we may have the output y t also and here along with the derivatives we may have the input x t. So let's write down the general equation. We have a n which is the coefficient multiplied to the nth derivative of output y t plus the preceding term will be a n minus 1 the n minus 1 times derivative of output y t plus all the way to output y t and here the coefficient will be a sub 0. Now we will write down the right side of the equation here we have the derivatives of input x t and input x t. The coefficients will be b m the m time derivative the m time derivative of input x t plus the preceding term will be b m minus 1 and the m minus 1 times derivative of input x t all the way to b0 x t. So this is the general equation and there are two conditions along with this equation. The first condition is all the coefficients must be constant. So this one here is the first condition. All the coefficients should be constant and when this happens we can say that the given system is time invariant system. So the first condition is for time invariancy. The second condition is very easy. We have already discussed about this condition. All the initial conditions should be zero. I will write down the condition here. All the initial conditions should be equal to zero. This is the second condition. And when this happens, we can say that the given LTI system is linear system. So for linearity, this condition is important and for time invariancy, this condition is important. And after this, we will move to the equation I have written here. Equation should match with this equation I have written here in which a n, a n minus 1 all the way to a 0 and b m, b m minus 1 all the way to b 0 are the coefficients which are constant. So in examination, whenever you have the differential equation of LTI system given, simply match the equation with the standard equation written here and also look for the initial conditions. If the initial conditions are not given, then assume initial conditions are zero. This is one important point. If they are not talking about initial conditions, then assume them to be zero. This means the given system is linear and obviously if this equation is matching to the given equation, the coefficients are constant. So you can say that the given equation is the equation of an LTI system. So I hope this point is clear to you. Now we will move to the questions. In the first question, in the question number one, the differential equation is given. It is equal to twice of second derivative of output y t plus thrice of first derivative of output y t plus 4 y t equal to x t. So you can clearly see here the equation is matching with our standard equation. So we can say that the given differential equation is an equation of LTI system. You can check it step by step. You can see all the coefficients the coefficient here is 4 and the coefficient here is 1. So all the coefficients are constant. They are not depending on time. This coefficient is a2. This one here is a1. This one here is a0 and this one here is b0. So all the coefficients present in the equation are constant. So definitely this system is time invariant and you can also see the initial condition is not given. This means the initial conditions are equal to zero and the equation is matching to the above standard equation. This means it is linear in nature. So overall we have linear time invariant system. So this is the answer of the first question. Now we will move 
to the question number two. In question number two, we have two times first derivative of output, but there is whole square. So two times whole square of first derivative of output y t plus y t equal to x t. So the coefficients are definitely constant here again. The coefficient is 2, the coefficient is 1, here also the coefficient is 1. So coefficients are constant but here the equation is not matching to the above standard equation. We don't have the square of the derivatives but here we have the square of the derivatives. So definitely the system is time invariant but it is non-linear. So it is not a LTI system. Now we will move to the third question. The third question is the last question. In this question we have two times the second derivative of output y t plus two t times the first derivative of output y t equal to the first derivative of input x t plus twice of x t. Our first step is to check whether the coefficients are constant or not and if you see the first coefficient it is constant a2 is constant here this is a1 and it is not constant it is equal to 2t and 2t means it is depending on time whenever there is change in time the coefficient will also change so this particular equation is not for time invariant system it is for time varying system but definitely the given equation is for linear system so overall we don't have the linear time invariant system so whenever you find any one coefficient is not constant there is no need to check further the given equation is not for LTI system so I will repeat the conclusion the differential equation will be given in the problem look for the initial conditions if initial conditions are not given, assume them equal to zero. This means because of initial conditions not given in the problem, we don't have the non-linearity. We can focus on our equation. And whenever the initial conditions are given and they are not equal to zero, there is no need to check the equation given because non-zero initial conditions will make your system non-linear. So this is the first thing you need to do. After this, you need to check whether the given equation is matching to the standard equation or not. And the step number one is to check the coefficients. All the coefficients in the equation should be constant. If they are constant, this means the given equation is time invariant. Then look for the derivatives. The derivatives should not have any non-linear operators operating on them. Like in example number two, we saw this is square operator operating on the derivative of output yt. So whenever such operators are operating, this means the system is non-linear. So this is the complete process and I hope you now understand how to check the given equation is for LTI system or not. So this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. From the next lecture, we will start the Fourier series and the remaining questions of LTI systems we will solve in discrete time part and after completion of Fourier transform and Laplace transform. So this is all. See you in the next one.